daunting. That's the word a lot of moms use to describe what it feels like to return to the workforce after having kids, particularly if there's a big gap on the resume. But if that's you, no need to fear. Your Day with Anna Coyman is here. We are talking with Bob Navartov, who is a business executive and also a TEDx speaker who specializes in self-advocacy. How are you? Doing well, and thank you so much for having me here. Thanks for joining us. So why do you feel so passionate about helping women be self-advocates? So I grew up in India, and I grew up with my grandfather, who was a self-made man, and he had uh, three sisters. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them were, you know, during that time, it was tough trying to come back into the workforce. And in India, too, we come from a society where there is gender set expectations. Totally. And it's, tough to navigate that but I was raised to you know be my own advocate and understand why it was important to do that and now as a mom with you know raising two daughters in this current world and seeing the impact that the society that society has had especially after the pandemic I feel like it's important for us as women to continue to be our own advocates and be able to ask for what we want even though we know it's difficult yeah and what a gift that you had from your grandfather to be so forward thinking and now you're giving that gift to so many women as well going to new york city and giving your ted talk pretty cool um so tip number one you have for women who have got a gap on the resume right. trying to re-enter the workforce what do we need to know i think it starts with believing in yourself you can't be what you can't see and i love that quote because Everybody can tell you to go do something and be there and that you're capable, but until you actually believe in yourself, yeah. you're not gonna be able to do it. So it's gotta start with you believing you can. And are there any tips that you have for that positive visualization? Because sometimes people struggle with that right. and they can't see it, especially if the people that are around them right. can't see it either. Right, I'd say it's funny, like as, as moms, we're really good at inspiring our children to believe in themselves. We, you know, from that taking that first step to helping them ride a bike to giving them that confidence to walk into that school and start kindergarten yeah i think we've got to take those same tips and flip it on ourselves and i know it's easier said than done but i think it starts with it doesn't matter whether you want to tell someone out loud what you want to be or be able to do but you've got to have that aspiration in your mind and it's okay and i think it's that giving yourself that grace and power that you truly can do what you want and, and if it's something that you've got to be able to tell yourself even if it's in private that's okay I think yeah. start there and give yourself that write confidence. it down on a piece of write paper it put it on your mirror put that's it by the refrigerator or by the door that's on your right. way out where right. you're gonna grab your keys or something that's right. um, you say that we also really need to know our story we've right. got to figure out how to tell our story right. why we have been out of the workforce right. and spin it in a positive way how right. much have we learned we need to know about what our kids have taught us that's right the organizational skills yes. I guess and what else how do we spin that story I think being comfortable about telling your story requires you to be comfortable in sharing both the good and the bad. And a lot of times we focus on, we try to make it, we feel like our story isn't worth telling because we don't see the highlights in our story. We don't see some of the, you know, the failures or the impacts that we may have had on how it actually made us stronger. Mm -hmm. And the more we get comfortable in recognizing that that journey we were on, the break included becoming a parent, and how we dealt with parenthood, which is different for every single person, yeah. is in itself what, what makes us really unique and what's making us stronger. And so I always tell folks that when you share your story and when you chose to take a break, taking a break, especially when you have a career and making that sacrifice to be there for someone else and not yourself is actually a very powerful thing in leadership. It really unzips your soul that's becoming correct. a mom. It's not just a baby that's born, that's right? Correct. A mother is born as well. This journey into matrescence that's correct. is so beautiful. That's so we correct. have to learn to spin that and really see that. That's correct. Ourselves. And, and a lot of times in today's world, especially around leadership, we talk a lot about um, empathetic leadership. We talk about vulnerability. We talk about servant leadership. And as a mother, you do that all the time. And so learning how to be able to tell that story and be proud that you made that choice and that choice was the best thing for you and your family at that time. And it's made you stronger, made you a better employee, made you a better leader and a businesswoman, yes. whatever that is in your world. 
you need to be able to be comfortable in saying that. And even if someone has been a stay-at-home mom right. for six years, eight years, 10 years, more, more often than not, I've found with my girlfriends, right. you're doing more than just being exactly. in the house and yes. looking after the home and Correct. the children. Yeah. Um, so do we need to write these things down as we go along the years? Right. Do we rack our brain and try to just remember what we've done, the consulting and freelance little right. odd jobs that we may have done? I think sometimes it's okay to, to be able to even if you haven't done it over a period of time, if you're doing it right now, take that time to just self-reflect. Okay. But look at it as what are the big things you did, whether it was being a part of the PTA, volunteering at school, and like you said, a lot of moms I know uh, have done things where they're selling stuff on Etsy. They've, you know, they've run, you know, if, if you're part of a Girl Scouts troop and you've been running it, you've taught kids about leadership, you've organize things and a lot of these skills are transferable into the workforce so look at the things that you're most proud of but take the time to your point right. in writing down the things that you can remember okay. that challenged you to do things or utilize the skills that you know you're really good at doing. Now your tip number three on this success path yes. to getting back into the workforce and feeling confident through all of this is really about knowing your choices Correct. so how do we know what our options even are if we've right. been out for a while? So I'd say a couple of things. I think it's okay to go back and not feel like you have to do the exact same job you did in the past. I think it's focused on taking the time to understand what was your strengths and what did those experience entail? Because I tell folks the jobs we all had in the past are not the jobs we do today. In most of my mm -hmm. career, every job I've taken on never existed prior to me taking it yeah. on. So you're preparing based on core capabilities and skills. And I think that's a great place to be in this current market based on what we were all used to because we were used to having specific titles and specific mm -hmm. jobs, but they keep changing. And so one, I think, take the time to explore and understand what a half of these jobs even mean in today's <laughs> world, right? And so understand what skills are they looking for. I think the next thing is also knowing what do they pay in today's market? Yeah. What you made, you know, eight years ago, seven years, even five years ago, isn't the same today. And you can go to you know websites like Glassdoor and start looking up people with your skill sets and with the number of years of experience you had. Don't exclude your, you know, your experience as a parent because there are skills you developed through parenthood. Make sure you categorize all that in and figure out what the market is. And aim high, I always tell folks. Aim high, aim yeah, high. you gotta see it to believe it. Yes, aim high right. and miss 100% of the chance, uh, shots that you don't take. That's right. Um, so how do we make sure that we are bold and courageous and clear right. on this journey? So if we get a job interview and we are ready to tell our story, right. we know our chances, we know what we want, yep. how do we come across in a positive way and not a bossy way or a pushy way? Right. So the, well, the one thing I tell everybody is, Every time we're always scared to that uh, to do that to be bold and just say what we want to say, but I want to tell everybody this: everyone is scared. <laughs> you know, courage, you know, literally doesn't exist without fear, and that's what. As long as you know you're not in it alone, you're not the only one feeling worried about going there and really making that bold ask you'll be okay. So every person, people yeah. show it differently, but inside everyone is worried when yeah. they go through that process. And I guess when you are a mom, if being a mom is still a big priority along that's with correct. your career, if you go in and just say, hey, you know, I'm open to anything. anything that's I'm right. open to anything, I'll do anything. Well, are you willing to travel to Texas and right. California? Are you willing to night work nights and holidays right. and weekends? Maybe you are, but maybe, maybe you're not. not. That's right. And so I think you've just got to be okay with it. And then the clear piece is really important, like you said, right? We don't want to go in there and be kind of wishy-washy. You want to be able, what is important to you, like that's part of your preparation and knowing your choices, is the things that are non-negotiable should be non-negotiable. -nego don't let anyone make you feel like it needs to change. And then the other piece when you're being clear is you don't have to over you know, explain yourself. As a woman, we feel like if I said I want to raise or if I feel like I'm going to ask for a certain amount of money, I feel like I have to justify all the research I did. The reality is you don't. You've got to learn to be comfortable with people being quiet and processing what you said and just sitting in that moment. Yes. And so that's what I mean by being bold and you know courageous and clear is you've got to put yourself out there, but you've also got to be clear enough 
and that's it. And you don't have to over explain it. I have to say, watching your TEDx talk, that was the thing that you said that stuck with me the most was get comfortable with the science, silence, silence and get right. comfortable with the quiet. After you say what you say, let it linger. That's right. And be, be proud and confident That's right. in that. Okay, finally, tip number five on this success, success path is to make sure that we really have a tribe around right. us that is going to be supportive and make us feel good. Right. How do we find that? So I think a lot, as women, I think we naturally like finding our people. Like women like having, you know, whether it's the best friend or if it, even if it's your family, it could be your spouse, you know, it could be, uh, you know, your sister, your aunt. All of us have those people in our lives as women that make us feel really good about who we are and they bring out the best version of who we are. Those people are really important in times like this because when you ask for what you want, it's not gonna, it, the right thing will always come to life and it may not be at that first time you do it. And I always tell folks that's part of the experience, mm -hmm. right, going through the process. And so when you're in those times when you're doubting yourself or things haven't gone as way, the way you've wanted to, you really want those people rooting for you and continuing to push you. And so I always tell folks like those people matter and it's, important to have them but you've got to remember as women if you find your tribe there's those have to be women that root for you regardless and so i always tell women like it's about women empowering other women it's not women competing with other women that makes a very yeah. big difference as you figure out who your tribe is collaboration over competition That's and correct. finding women who aren't secretly going ha she didn't get what she that, exactly because sometimes That's right. that could be human nature That's too correct, yes. and it's rare that you really find a true girlfriend yes. who who does that that's right so amazing yeah. um finally as we go it can be really daunting yes. like we like we said at the very start of this interview so many stairs correct so what is it just one foot in front of the other one it, step at a time exactly or? that's the thing i tell folks i said it you know I, I do this a lot when we have those moments in life when you're you feel like you're drowning but you but as women we you know, we keep that head above water. We know how to do it. And I always hear Dory's voice in, my, in the back of my head, like, just keep swimming, right? Yeah. And that's the whole thing, is you just have to keep taking that one step at a time. Don't look at the big picture. Don't look at how daunting it is. Focus on what is that first thing I'm going to do. And that's why the five steps, the way we kind of put it, and the sequencing of it mattered, because every time you take that first step, the next step gets a little yeah. easier and it gets closer and it makes it makes you feel like it's not as big as you thought it was going to be. Right. Yeah. And success really snowballs, doesn't That's it? It's just correct. like a snowball rolling down a hill. That's right. Um, well, Bhavna, where can we find out more information about you? Do you have a favorite social media platform or a website? Where can we find out more? So I, I, I'm working on my social media piece, but I am on Instagram and I am on LinkedIn, I think, and I I think I'm the only Bhavna Bartha in the world, yes. so I think it's Amazing. easy to find me. Yes. <laughs> well, fantastic. I've really enjoyed talking with you, and I hope all of you enjoyed this as well. If you found it helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so you get notified when we release our next video. See you later. Thanks Thank again. you. Thanks so much.